afraid they're only going to be disappointed once again. Well, well, look who it is. The great Detective Hazo. What nonsense were you talking about just now? I've been worried about you, you know. So much so that I took the trouble to write that heartfelt letter to the Tenryo Commission. Well, was it sufficiently flattering for you? Uh-oh, they're at it again. <sighs> Let's not waste the traveler's time, Songo. Just tell me, what do you want? <laughs> Fine by me. My request is simple. Disclose all the details of the Ryuji case. It's time you stop hiding the truth and let me investigate it thoroughly. First of all, that case has already been solved. Second, I've disclosed everything the police station has on the case. And third... Enough! You can only fool Ryuji with that. If you don't want to cooperate, I can assure you that I will write more letters to the headquarters of the Tenryo Commission. I will not give up on this case. <sighs> oh, wait! Hold on! Can someone please explain what's going on here? Pilot doesn't have a clue what you two are talking about! <sighs> Alright, let me explain. Several years ago, a terrible murder took place in the police station. I was still working at the Tenryo Commission then, and the victim was actually... my dear boss. Due to various factors, I was deemed to be the top suspect, which is why it's called the Ryuji case. Also, Hazel wasn't a part of the police station back then. He was a detective at the agency, um, which at the time was called the Bonton Sango and Hazo Detective Agency. After the incident, I was quickly convicted and sent to prison. Fortunately, Sango then promptly proved my innocence and caught the real murderer. But that murderer was actually just a dummy to throw us off, am I right, Detective Shikinoe? <sighs> Sango thought that everything went smoothly, so much so that she suspected the real murderer was someone else. Of course, Detective Hazo was also helping with the investigation. But after a long time, he still came up empty-handed. Later on, he decided to join the police station to continue his investigation on the inside, which is why he left the detective agency. Ha! That's what I thought, too. I was foolish enough to believe that Detective Shikinoing and I shared a common goal. But I was wrong about him. He has no sense of loyalty at all. He just wanted to become an official as a means of gaining fame and fortune. Come on, stop exaggerating. Let me set the record straight here. First, I joined the police station long after that murder case happened, and it had nothing to do with any inside investigation. That's just somebody's wishful thinking. Second, purely out of curiosity, I did investigate the case later from within the police station. My conclusion was that the suspect Sango had caught was in fact the real murderer. And lastly, when Sango didn't buy my conclusion and asked me to disclose all related case files from the police station, I did exactly as she asked. I didn't hide anything. Huh. He's lying right through his teeth. That's it. I want this to end once and for all. Since the Traveler's my supervisor today, they have complete access to all the police station's files. If she's willing to help re-examine the case and arrives at the same conclusion that I did, then you won't have to doubt me anymore. Well, huh? Unless you don't trust the Traveler. Hm. Come on, say it. <laughs> it's not about whether the Traveler's trustworthy. I'm just wondering if you will interfere somehow. <laughs> the thought never even crossed my mind. You have to swear that you will not mislead the Traveler by any means and let her investigate the truth on her own. No problem. Cross my heart, hope to die. Well, Traveler, are you willing to help me with this? Will you agree to re-examine the Ryuji case and find the truth? You can bill me later for however much you'd like as compensation. Songo, really? However much they want? Money is valuable, no doubt. But pursuing the truth is the reason I started this agency. The Ryuji case is the only case I failed to solve. I am willing to give you anything. All right, I'm counting on you, Traveler.
You hear that, Detective Shikanoin? Ha! Now we just need to wait and see. All right, all right, I got it. No need to keep yammering like that. You'll scare the kids next door. Come on, let's go back to the police station. Hang out here for a sec. I need to go to the archives to get the case files. For now, why don't you go and chat with Yuriki Owada over there? He worked on this case too back in the day. No, no, you misunderstand. It's not that I want you to look into this, it's just that you're the only one who can. You're the only one I can think of who Sango would ever believe. She trusts in both your qualities and abilities, so I hope your findings can finally convince her and put an end to this whole thing. Sure, she's just writing complaint letters for now, but who knows what she'll do in the future. <laughs> Alright, I'll go get those case files. You go ahead and talk to Yuriki Owada for a while. Oh, hello there! The Ryuji case. Oh, so you want to reinvestigate that one? That was several years ago now, but I still remember it clearly. It's pretty hard to forget something like that. Especially when the victim was the head of this police station. His name was Takatsukasa Isamu, the younger brother of Takatsukasa Susumu, head of the Takatsukasa clan. He was really one of a kind. Decisive, brave, and smart. He was much younger than me, and already had quite a reputation. I'm sure he would have gone far in the Tenryo Commission, if only he was still alive. What a shame. Who would have guessed someone was plotting against him? <laughs> People will believe anything they hear. Everyone in the police station knew that Ryuji saw Takatsukasa Isamu like a father. Ryuji was an orphan, you know. Before he joined the station, he had been taking odd jobs here and there. It was Isamu who really took him under his wing. Ryuji was simple and not particularly bright, but he was very loyal to those who treated him well. He's also hard-working. Isamu must have seen these qualities in him and decided to keep Ryuji by his side. Ryuji worked with him for years after that, and was even promoted to be his personal assistant. Do you really think Ryuji would do anything to harm him? So, then why was Ryuji convicted? Even Paimon can tell that's a mistake! Well, here comes the interesting part of the case. Within a week, and before all the loose ends had even been tied up, Ryuji received his conviction. Moreover... It was signed by Madame Kujo Sara. What? Why would Sara do something like that? <laughs> I'm getting older now, and my eyesight is poor. I can't see too clearly anymore. Hey, come on, Yuriki Owada. There's nothing to see. It's obvious that the Kujo clan did it. You can't just go around saying things like that, Wisuki. Those were just hearsay. There was no evidence. That's not true. Traveler, you may be unaware that the Takatsukasa clan has always been assisting the Kujo clan in the Tenryo Commission. But who doesn't want to be the boss, right? And Takatsukasa Isamu was the key figure for the Takatsukasa clan to bring down the Kujo clan. At that time, no one was held in higher regard than Isamu. So naturally, the Kujo clan saw him as a potential threat. Kujo Takayuki must have been planning it all along, that rascal. Takayuki is able to control the Takatsukasa clan as long as he's in power. 
But by the time he retires, Isamu would have been at the apex of his political power, while Masahito and Kamaji of the Kujo clan would still have been too young. <laughs> the two of them wouldn't stand a chance against Isamu. You think Kujo Takayuki would simply sit back while Isamu gained traction? So he decided to strike first. You youngsters and your conspiracy theories. No, it's true. It's the only way to explain it. Otherwise, why would an impartial person like Madame Kujo Sara sign Ryuji's conviction so quickly? They had to find a scapegoat to pacify the Takatsu Kasa clan, so Kujo Takayuki must have told her to sign it immediately. I'm not accusing Madame Kujo Sara of anything, mind you. I, I respect her very much, but maybe she had no other choice. <laughs> what do you know? I'm sure Madame Kujo Sara must have had her own reasons. The guy was a forensic expert who worked in the station named Shiroyama. I have to admit, he wasn't easy to track down. That Sango really is something, though. She caught him without even breaking a sweat. It turned out that after poisoning Isamu, Shiroyama secretly took the poison to Ryuji's place in order to frame him. Later on, the poison was also found in the forensic office, but that was already after Shiroyama's death. He confessed everything in a testament. That's right. He hung himself in the forensic office not long after Sango was on his trail. Probably because he knew it was only a matter of time before he would be caught. Of course, he didn't admit whether he had been prompted by Kujo Takayuki. He took the responsibility alone. I bet Kujo Takayuki promised him a sizable compensation. After all, Shiroyama had a family to feed. There you go again, pulling conclusions out of thin air. There wasn't any evidence of that at all. Listen, I can almost guarantee that it was the Takatsu Kasa clan who invited Sango to investigate. We all knew that Ryuji was just a scapegoat. You think the Takatsu Kasa clan wouldn't figure that out? They're not stupid. So, they were suspicious of the Kujo clan and invited Sango to take the case. However, the Kujo clan were still a step ahead and were able to remove themselves from the situation before the whole thing blew up. They drove Shiriyama to take all the blame as well as his own life. A perfectly clean cut for the Kujo clan. With Shiriyama dead, there was no one left to testify. Even the Electro Archon herself wouldn't be able to do anything. <sighs> you make up stuff faster than a politician. It's a wonder nobody's asked you to be an advisor yet. Hey, that's their loss. <sighs> Hey, I brought the files. <laughs> I bet you got quite an earful just now, huh? <laughs> but don't believe everything they say. After all, people can tell you anything, and it's hard to separate truth from rumors without facts. So what really matters is the case files. Everything laid out here is all that the police station has about the case. Please, take a look. Remember, you may find many clues during an investigation, but not all of them are useful. And in some cases, the clues you will find will not only be useless, but downright misleading. Also, if a clue cannot corroborate anything on its own, you can always compare it with other clues, and maybe then you'll find what you're looking for. Okay, that should just about do it. I'm looking forward to your results. Uh, hold on. What actually counts as a result? Usually, you need to find two things from these clues. A proven motive and proven means. Once you can confirm these two things, the criminal can be proven guilty. Alright, you can go ahead and get started now. I look forward to hearing your verdict.
Knights and aristocrats share the same cultural heritage, but the knights had enough sense to do away with all the superfluous detail. Synthetic toxin? What's that? Ryuji's conviction really was signed by Kujosara. But now we know she had it wrong! Huh? That's weird. There's nothing here! This must be some of the false information that Hazel told us to look out for. So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Really? You found the criminal's motive and means that quickly? <laughs> awesome! Alright, let's talk about the motive first. What clue reveals the criminal's motive? Although the conviction states that Shirayama grew to resent Takatsukasa Isamu due to work conflicts, it's not detailed enough for us to understand the motive. Perhaps you should give it some more thought. Sure. Let me know once you've made some progress. all kinds of stuff. Doctor, he could easily pull off something like this.
that Shiroyama was the murderer, right? That is, if he was telling the truth, of course. Person. But something about the tone sounds weird. So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Really? You found the criminal's motive and means that quickly? <laughs> awesome. All right, let's talk about the motive first. What clue reveals the criminal's motive? Excellent work. According to the victim's message, the two had deep conflicts. Although we cannot confirm whether the poison had been requested by the victim or not, it is true that Isamu used Shiroyama's family to blackmail him. Such circumstances could be enough motive for Shiroyama to commit the crime. But wasn't Takatsukasa Isamu good to Shiroyama? He even went to Shiroyama's house to bring health supplements. <gasps> <gasps> but maybe he didn't really bring health supplements. Maybe it was something bad. <laughs> Is that what you think, Paimon? Well, we later found out that what Takatsukasa Isamu sent to Shiroyama's house was indeed health supplements. But if you consider the circumstances, what he sent wasn't important. What was important is that sending the supplements was actually a dangerous signal. Isamu was essentially implying, I can put anything in your wife's supplements at any time. If you really care about her safety, then get me what I want. <sighs> so scary! Your assumption sounds like a real threat! Uh, you're not really that dark inside, are you? You don't really catch criminals by standing in the light, do you? Basically, these two clues work to verify each other, and the murderer's motive is confirmed. Now, all that's left is the means of the crime. Next, which clue confirms the criminal's means? So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Bingo! The autopsy report confirms that the cause of death was a special toxin. The testament indicates that Shiroyama used his position as a forensic expert to mix the toxin into the cold medicine taken by the deceased. But is that really the truth? Is it not possible that the toxin was mixed into the fish liver paste? Well, according to the toxicology report, this white powder only dissolves in water. Neither rice nor the fish liver paste could be used as a carrier of the toxin. The cold medicine was the only option. Putting the poison elsewhere would not only fail to guarantee a lethal dose, but would also increase the chance of it being noticed by the deceased. Therefore, the means is also confirmed. Add that to the motive for the crime and... Oh, so the murderer really was Shiroyama. Yep, pretty clear cut, wouldn't you say? Look, I really don't know what Sango is so suspicious about. Yeah, it's pretty clear cut. Huh, you could say it's almost too clear cut. Oh, well, let's hear them. Maybe I have answers. What's bugging you? Hmm, <laughs> very nice. Top marks for attention to detail. It doesn't have any real bearing on the case, but let me explain how that works for you. So, why would Madame Kujosara sign one conviction sentencing Ryuji to temporary incarceration awaiting trial, and another conviction sentencing Shiroyama to death? 
You may have heard some rumors back at the station that when this case first came up, the Kujo clan higher-ups were in dire need of a scapegoat to keep the Takatsukasa clan off their backs. And poor Ryuji became the successful candidate. In less than a week, the conviction was drafted, sent to Madame Kujo Sara, and signed. Allegedly, she knew what it was about as soon as she saw it, and signed it with no questions asked. But anyone who buys this story clearly doesn't know that much about Madame Kujo Sara. She's the most principled person in the entire Tenryo Commission, for goodness sake. So, how would she respond to a case filled with unanswered questions and no confession from the suspect? Oh, you mean... Exactly. Before she signed it, she changed Ryuji's conviction from the death sentence to temporary incarceration. Ryuji escaped a disastrous fate without ever realizing it. Had Madame Kujo Sara not changed his sentence, Sango would have been seeking justice for a dead man. Why was Sara so lenient with Ryuji? That's the wrong question. This wasn't about Ryuji, but Madame Kujo Sara's principles. The conviction could have been for a Ryuji, a, a Guji, heck, even a Tanuki, and she would have made the same decision. Given the enormous pressure she was under at the time, I'd say she did the most she could. Don't you think? Pressure? Really? Was someone higher up putting pressure on Sara? The pressure came from all sides. The deceased was the leader of the police station and the rising star of the Takatsukasa clan. All eyes were on this case. How this became reduced to the unimaginative rumor that Madame Kujo Sara convicted Ryuji under pressure from her superiors, I have no idea. Ugh. Rumors here, conspiracy theories there, Ugh. lies at every turn! Fortunately, Madame Kujo Sara works in an open and transparent manner and pays no heed to rumors like this. She just rolls her eyes and forgets all about them. Just because she has never publicly clarified the truth doesn't mean she was hiding anything. So when I asked her about it, saying it was relevant to a case I was working on, she just told me how it was. <laughs> Believe me, in this case, more than any other, I have checked every last detail. Maybe the report was wrong. The International Trade Association is a gathering place for merchants from all over. Countless merchants pass through the port of Rito every day. It's natural for there to be a couple of missing records here or there. Hmm. <sighs> this also puzzles me. Maybe someone doesn't want us being privy to the content inside, or maybe Shiroyama tore a bunch of pages out by accident. But regardless, this isn't essential to the case. Like I said before, a lot of what comes up in an investigation is irrelevant information. The crucial elements are Shiroyama's motive and means, which we have established. Well, I've answered all your lingering questions, and you've checked all the material the police station has, so... What do you think? Case closed? Hmm... Paimon still feels like something doesn't add up. But... Then again, Heizo did give us all the files the police station had. Ugh... This is annoying! I don't follow. Enlighten me. Huh! Right! Why do you keep emphasizing police station every single time? You tell me. Why do I keep emphasizing police station every time? <laughs> so we're finally here, huh? I was starting to think our investigation was about to end a little early. That would have been a real shame. And alive, you finally saw through my little game. You're absolutely right. There is other information that the police station doesn't have. Reason being? It's my own evidence. And this evidence should help answer a couple of your questions more clearly. Why was the research log from the Office of Forensic Science blank? And where did the white powder come from? Keeping secrets! <laughs> Don't you have secrets too? Uh, no. N uh, nope. Definitely not. Let's talk somewhere else. This isn't the best place for this discussion.
This is a quiet spot. Let's talk here. All right. Here's the secret I've been keeping all along. The torn out pages from the research log of the Office of Forensic Science. Great! Uh, but... Uh, Paimon can't believe you kept this a secret all this time! It's not like you think. I wasn't the one who tore out the pages. Look, just read it over first. Finished? Do you see now? The method used by the perpetrator to commit his crime wasn't by putting the white powder in the cold medicine. That's correct. The white powder was Shiroyama's invention. As a forensic doctor, he provided a special cold medicine for Takatsukasa Isamu. The autopsy report showed that this medicine contained a high volume of acidic fruit and vegetable extracts. Then, he tricked Ryuji into sending fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu. When the two substances were taken together, a toxic dose of the substance formed in his body. This is the real modus operandi. Oh, that's awful. One was medicine, and the other was an expensive nutritional supplement. Both completely harmless. True, both are harmless on their own. But when combined, poof, that's it. It was not him who wanted to hide it, but the person pulling the strings behind him. Huh, you mean there was someone else pulling the strings? Aren't you curious where I found these pages from the research log? It was in Kujo Takayuki's secret warehouse. After I found the missing pages, I did some digging around and found out that Shiroyama had worked for Kujo Takayuki before joining the police station. The Kujo clan secretly provided Shiroyama with funds to study forensic science. I guess you could say that Kujo Takayuki's investment paid dividends in this case. Of course, I had only learned all of this after the Vision Hunt decree came to an end. Kujo Takayuki had lost his grip on power, and the Tenryo Commission was undergoing a general reshuffle. To avoid coming under suspicion, Madame Kujo Sara put me in charge of building a case against Kujo Takayuki. I found a huge stash of fish liver paste in a secret warehouse. Nothing hugely incriminating about that, of course, but I still took the trouble to open each and every package until finally... I had to concede that this really was just a huge stash of fish liver paste. But then, underneath the floor tiles where the fish liver paste was stacked, I found a secret compartment with this torn off research report lying inside. So it was him who wanted to frame Ryuji all along. What a nasty piece of work. Let's review the whole case from the top. First, Takatsukasa Isamu, for whatever reason, noticed Shiroyama's talent as a forensic doctor and asked him to develop a special poison on his behalf. But Shiroyama was already working for the Kujo clan, so he refused. Takatsukasa Isamu wasn't about to take no for an answer, and that's where things took a dark turn. He twisted Shiroyama's arm by making a veiled threat to harm his family. All Shiroyama could do was to secretly report everything to Kujo Takayuki. When Takayuki learned what was happening, he instructed Shiroyama to pretend to cooperate with Takatsukasa Isamu, then kill the latter with the white powder once it was fully developed. Meanwhile, Ryuji's only role in this case was to deliver the fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu on Shiroyama's orders. Completely unaware of the fact that he was being used as a pawn and that this was a key ingredient needed to create the poison. After the incident, Kujo Takayuki hoped to make Ryuji the fall guy, until the death sentence was stalled when it reached Madame Kujo Sara. In the meantime, Sango had begun her own investigation. Kujo Takayuki grew nervous that the truth would get out, so he threw Shiroyama to the wolves, hounding him to death and erasing all traces of contact between the two. And yet, he wanted to keep this secret formula, so he hid it. Greedy guy, that Takayuki. 
He must have wanted to have it on hand just in case he needed to employ it again in the future and make someone else disappear. This Kuju Takayuki is an evil lunatic! We've got to report this to A! Whatever his current punishment is, it needs to be ten times worse! That would be practically impossible. One research log found in his warehouse doesn't prove anything. Even I can think of a hundred excuses. Besides, Ryuji directly contributed to Takatsukasa Isamu's death by delivering the fish liver paste to him. The fact that he was unaware of the true nature of the situation doesn't matter. But... but... he's still innocent, right? Isn't it just a coincidence? Uh, I don't really doesn't get how the law works. <laughs> Legally speaking, the judge would most likely rule that it was accidental. But in practice, Ryuji may still have to end up shouldering some responsibility. So basically, you've been hiding the truth all this time to protect Ryuji. Mental trauma doesn't heal as easily as physical wounds. My biggest worry is that Ryuji would struggle to cope if he knew the truth. He's like an innocent child. He freely gives his trust and his love to everyone that treats him well. That's why he thought of Takatsukasa Isamu as a father figure. I'm pretty sure that to this day, he has never paused to wonder whether Takatsukasa Isamu was actually a good person, or if Sango just hired him as a gopher, or why I left the detective agency. If he found out the facts about Takatsukasa Isamu, I'm afraid it would crush him. Uh, <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm a little less confident than people might think. To prevent Ryuji from getting hurt, I covered up the truth. But by doing so, have I held him back? Did I do the right thing? I couldn't turn to anyone for help, and everyone around me thinks I'm so smart that I should just be able to handle every case on my own. Even if I tried to discuss it with them, they'd just say, Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Hazo. No problem's too difficult for you. But you're different. Unlike them, you don't have that kind of prejudice towards me. You've traveled far and wide and have had all kinds of experiences. It must have taught you a lot. Most importantly, my intuition tells me that you're someone special. That I can trust you and that you can help me. Right? So, I'd like you to be the one to decide whether we should expose the truth or not. Oh, you don't need to tell me what you decide, and you certainly don't need to decide right now. Let's just say I'm leaving this teensy tiny matter up to you. All right, let's head back to the detective agency. You can mull it over on the way. Once you've made up your mind, just tell Ryuji and Sango your verdict. Hey, Traveler! Hey, Detective Hazo! You're back already, huh? <laughs> I bet you're tired. Well, I just bought some tonkatsu. Care to join me? There's plenty for everyone. We'd love to! Uh, but wouldn't you like to hear the results of our investigation first? No matter what you were able to find, it's all in the past and won't ever change. So I think we'd better chow down first. Besides, if Sango's not happy with the results, we might not have anything to eat later. Come on, Ryuji, pipe down. Let's hear the Traveler's 